Valentine's Day is coming. So what can you do to make sure that the sex you have that day is mind blowing? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. And today we're going to talk about seven ways based in science that can help you have the best sex on Valentine's Day. Now, Valentine's Day is one of the most common days that couples have sex. Now, the studies that have shown somewhere around 60% of people who are surveyed are often saying that Valentine's Day is one of the most popular days that people have sex. Now, other popular days can be your birthday, your partner's birthday, or other special occasions, but Valentine's Day nearly tops the list. Now, we want to make sure that sex is going to be special on Valentine's Day. So what can you do to make sure that happens. Number one, have sex before dinner and drinks. When you eat food, your body then has to digest that food and it goes into a special mode of resting and digesting, which is not what needs to be activated when you want to have sex. Also, it increases blood flow to those areas of the body that need to digest the food, which means there's less blood flow for the areas that need the blood flow to get aroused. Also, whiskey dick is a real thing. If you drink too much alcohol, you can have difficulty getting an erection. Now this has nothing to do with your ability to get an erection normally, but certainly if you drink too much, it can make it more difficult to get an erection and subsequently penetrate and have vaginal intercourse. Number two, introduce novelty. Now this is particularly important if you are in a long-term relationship because just like anything else, the brain gets excited with new things, with novelty. So sometimes you can find that sex becomes a little boring when you're doing it the same way every single time and you're not changing it up. So think about ways that you can make it a little bit more exciting. This is very individual based on you and your partner, but it could be as simple as doing it in a new location or trying role play or just trying a new position. And this can make things just a little bit more exciting and a little more fun and end up in stronger and more intense orgasms. Number three, do something to de-stress during the day. Now stress in your body increases cortisol, which then decreases your sex hormones, which can make it less likely that you can get desire for sex. And stress is a big negative inhibitor of all sexual functions because your brain is the biggest organ for sex. So when it's stressed out, it can't focus and be mindful and present to enjoy sex. So if you can do something that helps you and your partner relax, that's why very often people will say, get a massage with your partner, because that allows you to completely relax and let go of tons of stress. Now, if you're not into massages, don't worry that you can decide what you and your partner like to do that helps you de-stress. It could be doing a puzzle together or meditating together, or just simply having a conversation that is not related to work or kids or parenting or anything else that might be stressing you out. And this leads us to the next thing, which is get physical together. Now, of course, I'm not talking about physical like sex being physical, but getting your exercise on. This leads us to number four, which is a thing that can lead to decrease in stress, but also has added benefits. And that is be physical together. Now I'm not talking about being physical, like being physical in the bedroom. Of course, that's the end goal here is being intimate with your partner, but you can actually do something like exercising together. And the reason this works is it activates the sympathetic nervous system, which then may increase arousal in the genitals as well as desire. And this is because you're getting increased blood flow to those areas. Now think about when you're exercising, your heart rate goes up, your breathing a little faster. And all of these things are exactly what happens when you're aroused or turned on. And so exercise can actually prepare you for sexual arousal. Additionally, exercise releases tons of feel good hormones or endorphins, and it can also increase the level of sex hormones, particularly testosterone, which is integral in desire. And of course it leads to reduction of stress. So win-win exercise together, get hot and sweaty before you get hot and sweaty together later. Leading us to number five, ask your partner for what they want. So if your partner doesn't know what turns you on, or you might want to try something different, 
open your mouth and tell them what you want. Because if you don't tell them, they're not gonna know and they're not gonna know how to turn you on. And there is nothing more sexy than someone who's confident enough to tell you what they want. So make sure you tell them and you ask them what they want. Because of course, communicate more pleasure and getting more orgasms. Number six is related to the fact that Valentine's Day is sort of a big day and it can lead to you feeling a lot of pressure for things to go perfectly. Now the next one is sort of counterintuitive, but make sure that sex is not mandatory. Now, you can imagine that for some people, Valentine's Day planning can get a little stressful. And if they know that they have to have sex that day, they may be worried if the sex is gonna be good enough or they're gonna perform well enough. And that anxiety can make it difficult to perform or react the way that you normally want to because you're not focused on the pleasure at hand or being mindful with what's going on during the sexual experience, but you're thinking about, oh my God, is this gonna work out okay? Is he or she enjoying it? Am I performing well enough? Is this good enough? And that is just not gonna allow you to enjoy the experience, maybe not reach climax or perform and get an erection if you're a man. So ultimately, take the pressure off. Focus on being intimate, having a great time, and make sure that if something goes wrong, it's okay. You move on. You find another way to feel good about yourselves and pleasure each other because there are a multitude of different ways that you can achieve pleasure, and they don't always include penetrative vaginal sex. Now, lastly, number seven, make sure to get good sleep up to Valentine's Day. Now, this is really important because one, obviously if you're tired and exhausted, you're not gonna be in the mood for sex, but even more so, sleep is correlated very strongly with elevated sex hormones. So if you're not getting good sleep, your testosterone is going to drop. And if your testosterone drops, you're not going to be feeling the desire to be intimate or have sex with your partner. So make sure that you're getting good quality sleep at least seven hours every night up until Valentine's Day so that you can be in your best, having the highest testosterone and having the most desire and interest in having sex, which will then ultimately make things a lot more fun and more enjoyable. All right, guys, if you have some tips on how to improve sex on Valentine's Day, make sure to leave them in the comments below so that people can read and check out exactly what you've done that's worked for you. I have some big news. We are expanding our clinic to Beverly Hills. So if you are located in the Los Angeles area or coming to the Los Angeles area, please feel free to make an appointment